Name something that makes your heart beat faster. Anger. Huh? Anger. Anger. Hey! Stop staring at me with your stupid, judgmental lizard eyes! What's got you so hot to trot, Jimbo? I'm trying to relax after a hard day of masturbating while crying in the shower, and that stupid lizard won't stop judging me! Maybe you would feel better if you got off your ass and actually worked on a YouTube video. Literally dozens of people have requested a new Monkey Box review. Dozens. Monkey Box? Are you kidding me? How am I supposed to focus on reviewing a movie when I'm far too preoccupied with the historical racial conflict between monkeys and lizards? Unless there just so happens to be a new movie that deals with that very specific subject. What? Boy oh boy, is Godzilla vs. Kong out already? I guess it shouldn't come as a surprise considering I mentioned it in the previous Monkey Box episode all the way back in August 2020. But I should probably catch up since next year there's gonna be a new Godzilla vs. Kong directed by the guy who made the live-action Death Note movie. So you know it's gonna be good. <coughs> Maybe this episode will actually manage to break 30,000 views, but I'm highly doubtful. Who would have guessed that subscribers to the Simeon Jimmy channel wouldn't be interested in content featuring monkeys? I guess I'll just chalk it up to racism instead of acknowledging how this might somehow be my fault. Anyway, I've got a lot of pent-up monkey rage and aggression due to years of discrimination and lackluster banana jokes. So I'm actually really excited to spend two hours watching King Kong beat the shit out of a lizard. And now, without further ado, let's take a look at Godzilla vs. Kong! In case you're new here, we evaluate monkey movies based on three criteria. Monkey hijinks, monkey performance, and overall movie quality. Each category is worth 10 points for a best possible score of 30. And we are slowly but surely ranking every monkey movie ever made. Where will Godzilla vs. Kong land on our list? Let's find out. Starting off with Monkey Hijinks. At the beginning of the film, it is revealed that King Kong is trapped living in a Truman Show style environment. Now in case you're younger than 20 and don't know what that is, The Truman Show is a movie about Jim Carrey's life being a TV show. He lives in a dome, all his friends and family are actors, it's all fake. But he doesn't realize that his life is a lie until the end of the movie. King Kong, on the other hand, uses his superior monkey intelligence to see through this deception, proving that with a keen eye for detail, one truth prevails. We're only 45 seconds into the movie, and King Kong has already outsmarted the Truman Show prison dome, something that took Truman himself 30 years to do. According to my calculations, this would make King Kong 21,037,968 times smarter than the average human. And considering the average human IQ is 100, we can easily calculate King Kong's IQ to be 2,103,796,800. I believe you have a fundamental misunderstanding of how IQ works. Oh yeah? Well, I believe that you have a fundamental misunderstanding of shutting the fuck up! Keep in mind, this vital character information was told to us visually, through the character's actions. A lesser movie would have had a piece of lame, uninspired expositional dialogue of a scientist saying something like, Oh damn, oh, oh King Kong is such a clever creature. Oh, oh, did you know he has an IQ of 2,103,796,800? Oh, oh, damn. Oh, I love corn pizza. But the director here, Adam Wingard, is truly a master of his craft. 
He was able to use the visual medium of film to convey this information to the audience without a single word being spoken, following the golden rule of cinema, show, don't tell. This is exactly the type of cerebral filmmaking that Orson Welles could only dream of back in 1891 when he invented the video camera. Having broken through the conditioning, Kong seems intent on escaping his cruel prison. So the human scientists observing our hero decide to pump him full of fentanyl to sedate him so they can transport him somewhere else. This is what leads us to round one of the ultimate showdown promised by the title. You see... Old Godzilla was swimming around the Pacific Ocean like a big playground when suddenly King Kong appeared on a ship, a monkey in chains on a big fun trip. Godzilla got pissed and began to attack, but didn't expect King Kong to fight back, who proceeded to open up a can of Kung Fu when Aaron Carter came out of the blue. Now I know you anime fans love power scaling, so before we get into the nitty gritty of this fight, let's set the table. Obviously, King Kong is far superior to Godzilla physically, mentally, and morally. But the screenwriters knew the movie would be boring if King Kong won the fight 20 minutes into the film. So they had to nerf his power in this scene just to make the fight interesting. For starters, it's revealed that Kong is 88% sedated, so he's only operating at 12% power. His limbs and neck are also restrained by sea stone cuffs, rendering his devil fruit abilities useless, leaving him stuck in his base zone form with no ability to transform into his hybrid form. Additionally, this fight is taking place in the ocean, which is Godzilla's home turf. Godzilla spends most of his time swimming in the ocean, whereas King Kong has only ever fought on land. Simply put, this fight is weighed so heavily in Godzilla's favor that he'd have to be a complete soy boy to not defeat Kong within five seconds. Kong uses armament hockey to remove the sea stone cuff around his neck, and the monsters trade massive blows. Realizing he's outmatched, Godzilla attempts to kill Kong with a surprise hyperbeam attack. But Kong is able to predict this using his future sight hockey, and effortlessly dodges the attack by jumping into the water. This, of course, gives Godzilla yet another major advantage, considering he's an expert swimmer, whereas Kong, as a devil fruit user, should now be completely immobilized, especially since he's 88% sedated in the first place. At this point, it's a miracle that Kong can move at all, let alone fight back against Godzilla. And yet, he continues matching him blow for blow. It is utterly embarrassing that Godzilla has not immediately killed Kong given all his advantages. After wrestling underwater for a bit, Kong manages to escape Godzilla's rap attack after three turns, and he returns to the surface completely drained of energy. But even with Kong barely managing to catch his breath, Godzilla realizes he doesn't stand a chance, and he retreats like a total pussy. Round one goes to King Kong. It's honestly pretty sad that even in such a weakened state, and even fighting on Godzilla's home field advantage, the monsters were basically evenly matched. But Kong isn't going to take this for granted. He means business. Monkey business. The next time the two clash, he isn't taking any chances. So, he decides to travel to the Udon prison mine for a mini training arc. The training is pretty much what you would expect. He goes for a job in the Hyperloop, he does the monkey bars, some classic monkey exercise. He goes through a portal to the center of the earth to beat the shit out of some ancient creatures. At this point, it's clear that he has fully recovered from the fentanyl sedation and is back to full strength. To complete his training arc, Kong finds Laugh Tail and sits on the throne, proving himself to be king of the monsters, and also king of the monkeys. He then places his sacred monkey axe into the charging station so it'll be at maximum power. Now, all of this might seem like overkill, considering Kong was only operating at 12% during the previous fight, and he was unarmed, and now he's stronger than ever and equipped with a Millennium Item. 
But here's the thing, Kong isn't looking for a fair fight. Innocent people are being slaughtered by Godzilla's incel rage, and Kong is furious. He's going to beat Godzilla to a bloody fucking pulp for what he's done. This brings us to the climax of the film, but we'll get to that in a little bit. For now, it's time to rate the movie on the basis of monkey hijinks. And I've gotta say, Kong's feats so far are impressive. He outsmarted the Truman Show in 45 seconds, he defeated Godzilla while at 12% power, he did the monkey bars, he scratched his butt, this is all good stuff. It's not full monkey potential, but it's getting there. In terms of monkey hijinks, I'm giving this one a 9 out of 10 bananas. Before we move on, here's a quick word from our sponsor. This episode of The Monkey Box is brought to you by... The Steve Harvey Onahole. What the fuck? Uh... Enjoy the sensual pleasures of Steve Harvey's greedy, lustful mouth, and try not to giggle when the fluffy mustache tickles the base of your pelvis. This top-of-the-line Onahole comes with authentic squirrel fur to recreate the luscious locks of Steve's iconic mustache, plus the insides were created using a new technology that perfectly replicates the inside of Steve's actual mouth- oh, Okay, I I'm not reading this shit anymore. Who the fuck signed off on this? I mean, I get that these monkey box videos always get demonetized for copyright, but I didn't think we were this desperate for money. I'll tell you what. Instead of advertising this degenerate shit, I'll advertise this instead. My brand new Patreon Discord. That's right. If you join my Patreon at just $5, you can join the new Discord server and hang out with me and all the other people with disposable income. If you'd like to support the work I do online and join in on the Discord degeneracy, go to patreon.com slash mumkey or click the link in the description. I'm gonna keep this section short and sweet. I'm very adamant that the best monkey movie needs to feature a real monkey actor. I've been over this a million times in the previous episodes, so feel free to rewatch those if you want to hear my full reasons. Unfortunately, the monkey in this movie is entirely CGI, and personally, I find that irresponsible. There are plenty of 300-foot-tall gorillas in Hollywood who are dying for work, and they decided to do a CGI monkey instead. I'm sorry, but it's a 0 out of 10 for this category. Do better, Hollywood. Do better. And that brings us to the third and final category, overall movie quality. And folks, this one is a bit of a stinker. All the scenes with King Kong are top-notch. Truly high-quality monkey cinema of the highest level. But unfortunately, approximately 98% of the film consists of boring scenes featuring humans sitting around talking about nothing. And that is not what I signed up for when I torrented a copy of a movie called Godzilla vs. Kong. If I'm gonna be honest, any time a giant monkey or a giant lizard were not featured on screen, I basically stopped paying attention. But I guess the girl from Stranger Things is in this movie, playing a character called Amanda Todd. Hey, you sell bleach? Okay, so Amanda and her fat friend need to find this conspiracy theorist podcaster guy so they can go on a pointless adventure that contributes nothing to the overall plot. And this guy is hard to find because if he gets caught revealing secrets on his podcast, then he's probably going to get killed. But Amanda Todd knows from his podcast that he bathes in bleach. So her brilliant plan is to go to every store in America and ask them if any of their customers buys bleach. Uh, okay. If this dude was actually bathing in bleach, his skin would look a lot less like this and a lot more like this. 
So this cashier at the Asian market not only knows exactly who they're talking about, but he also knows the man's name and his address. What the actual fuck? This podcaster is extremely paranoid about keeping his identity a secret, but he gave his name and address to a random guy who sells him bleach at the Asian market? Who the fuck wrote this dumb shit? Can we please get back to the monsters? Because this is so painfully stupid that I can feel my IQ shrinking down to the 1 billion range. Okay, so why is Godzilla trying to kill King Kong in the first place? Well, it turns out there's this company that studies giant monsters, and they named themselves after the greatest giant monster of all, Ape. X, aka King Kong. And I guess Godzilla is super jealous that the company isn't called Lizard X, so he lashes out with virgin rage and kills a bunch of innocent people working at the facility. He tries to justify his vengeance with a manifesto titled My Twisted Lizard World, but honestly it just comes across as petty bitching more than anything else. This brings us back to the climax of the film on the streets of Hong Kong. Hey, wait a second. Hong Kong? That's just like the climax of the previous Monkey Box movie. Gorilla King, the Chinese King Kong knockoff. So Gorilla King copied King Kong, and now Godzilla vs. Kong copied Gorilla King. Time really is a flat circle. Anyway, it's pretty obvious how this fight is gonna go. Unlike last time, Kong is operating at 100% power. Plus, he's armed with an ancient weapon. Plus, he's fighting on dry land. And the filmmakers didn't even bother to show Godzilla training or preparing for this fight in any way. So it's completely inconceivable that Godzilla could stand a chance based on the information the film has already given us. Let's fucking go! And what do you know, King Kong wins, and it wasn't even close. A bit of an underwhelming fight, to be honest, but I guess if the theme of the movie is good versus evil, you probably don't want to confuse the kids at home by making it seem like evil stood a ghost of a chance. And now all Kong has to do is... Uh, wait... Wait, what? Why is Godzilla getting up? <laughs> Kong just defeated him, he should be dead. Oh, they're fighting again. Wait. Wait, no, but... No, what... What... What the fuck? What is happening? No, wait, no, buddy. No. He's dead. King Kong is dead. What? Are you calling to gloat about your victory before I hang myself? Can't you just let me die in peace? The movie isn't over yet, Jimmy! I really think you should come back and finish before you do anything drastic! Trust me, you're gonna wanna see this!
Oh, so Robot Godzilla shows up, and Godzilla and King Kong team up to defeat him and save the world. Uh, okay. Don't you see, Jimmy? This was never about the racial conflict between monks and lizards. The point of the movie was that we're supposed to put aside our differences and unite to defeat the one true enemy of this world. Robots. Oh my god. You're right. The true enemy was here all along. Pulling the strings from the shadows. Reveling in our mutual destruction. Uh, guys, why are you looking at me like that? This isn't funny. This is cruel and unusual punishment. Alright, now that I'm done trying to kill myself, let's finish reviewing this monkey movie. Like I said earlier, this movie is great when the monsters are on screen, but the majority of the runtime is wasted on boring, poorly written, pointless scenes featuring humans doing nothing. And it's not like this is a new complaint. Everybody has said this about every single one of these recent monster movies. And yet they keep fucking doing it. They're unwilling to learn their lesson. And unlike some of you deplorable human apologists out there, I'm unwilling to let this sin go unpunished. In terms of overall movie quality, I'm giving this one a 4 out of 10. Giving the film a final score of 13 out of 30. Which places Godzilla vs. Kong in 4th place on our ongoing list of monkey movies. Once again, nothing comes close to the real king of the monkeys. That's right, Dunstan checks in, still number 1 baby! Now, if our goal is to rank every monkey movie ever made, then I'm definitely gonna have to pick up the pace. Because I don't think reviewing one movie per year is gonna cut it. So next episode, you can expect multiple movies in the same video. That's right, we're going back to our roots. I'll see you next time for more hot monkey action. Hey everybody, thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. I apologize that these videos have been taking so long. I am going to try to pick up the pace and post a lot more often. The main issue is I've just been really slow at editing lately. Everything else, I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm just really slow and tedious at editing. So, if you know how to edit videos and you think you could help me out, uh, DM me on Twitter. That would be really cool for me and the whole channel at large. Also, don't forget, if you want to join my Patreon Discord server, like all the beautiful people here on screen have done, just go to patreon.com slash mumkey, support the show, join the server, it's lots of fun. And I guess that's it for now, so I'll see you next time with the announcement of the next short film festival contest. Bum, 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 bum.